So when was the first ever race? Well, it's hard to precisely uh, uh, identify. For example, uh, we've got uh, a movie from 1959, Ben-Hur, which depicts a scene uh, from, uh, from Jesus' time. So 2,000 years ago uh, in Rome, uh, a chariot race. And so we could say, well, that could be the first race, kind of this era. Uh, but you know, Richard Petty once said, well, when was the first race? Well, it was when the second car was made, because uh, obviously people would want to compete head-to-head -head, uh, with their new car. Here we have what is believed to be the first ever self-propelled vehicle, a steam engine from France in 1790. Think about that. That's just after uh, the United States became a country, so a long, long time ago. Simple idea here with, with the steam is we have to add, constantly add fuel or some mechanisms to heat this big water tank in the front, which then, of course, helps to expand air, cause pistons to move, crankshafts to turn, wheels to turn, and all of that good stuff. And so this also is why the origins of the term chauffeur. So a chauffeur we think of today as someone who drives us around, but as you would drive this vehicle, as you would move it around, you had to have someone constantly adding fuel, someone constantly adding something to then heat up this water. So here we can understand also the origins of a French term. Now what's key to this is in France is where we see a lot of the early origins of these self-propelled vehicles of various forms. Moving on, about 100 years later, we have an electric-powered vehicle that set the land speed record. And so we have this new era of electric cars uh, in this modern 21st century. Well, the electric car, it's been around for a long, long time. Uh, whereas the steam engine, the problem was kind of, yeah, it was just a lot of inputs. You really couldn't go too far because it's so heavy uh, and you always had to be having something to add uh, to, to, the, to the fuel, to add the, to the heat, uh, and became cumbersome. Now with batteries, same idea. Uh, battery technology wasn't like it, was, it is today, and so these batteries are massive suckers. And so because of that, these were quite heavy. And uh, over time, you run out of your charge. And so what won out was the next vehicle the internal combustion engine that is gas powered. Here we have Carl Benz who, you know, this is actually debated whether or not it's him or, or a guy named Daimler, who we know today as Daimler Chrysler. Both of them actually on the same day in Germany uh, took their patent, took their idea of an internal combustion engine uh, to uh, the German patent office. So it's debated on which one's the first, but this is the first one that had wheels and kind of the setup that we would think of uh, today, even though it's obviously three wheels. And so in Germany is actually where we see the first ever internal combustion engine, which now, because all you had to do is just add fuel, and it now allows uh, drivers, uh, riders, uh, to go further dis uh, farther distances. And so they're not uh, like the steam engine, so heavy, so kind of stuck in place, or the electric engine, where it was just kind of however lo uh, long your battery would last here, you could go much longer distances. And so this is why this particular... Uh, uh, type this invention uh, one out in terms of which vehicle we see today. Quickly summarizing what we just talked about but also adding some new information, the origins of motorsport can be tied to origins in automotive technologies whether they be steam, electric, or gas or internal combustion engines. And so where did this occur? If we go back to use history, the Industrial Revolution in Western Europe, but also the United States occurred there in the 1850s to 1900s. And so that's really where we saw innovations, new ideas, new technologies, new materials. And so the Industrial Revolution was key to kickstarting a lot of these innovations. Now where is the Industrial Revolution happening? It's happening in Brazil. India, China, and where are we seeing new automotive manufacturers or, or come from? We're seeing them coming from those countries that are moving through the Industrial Revolution at the moment. So historically, we can go and tie this to those key uh, eras that you would talk about in a history class. Further, kind of the relevancy of motorsport. We've got these new ideas, uh, these new technologies. Uh, and so these new technologies then had to be marketed to new individuals because these are expensive. Going back to the previous discussion we had, motorsport is expensive. New technology costs money. And so as people came up with new ideas, they also had to make some money to help fund these ideas. And so the inventors of these various technologies then became sellers of their vehicles as well, sellers of their ideas, so that they can come up with new ideas, new projects, what have you. Now when we go back to the 1800s, 
many different individuals were coming up with their own inventions and their own ideas. Today, comparatively, we just have a few automotive manufacturers, a few automotive innovators. Back in the old days, there were so many different people that had their ideas. Here is just a, a mix of, uh, of various key names of individuals who were very much tied to motorsport, uh, but also tied to early automotive uh, innovations. All these names, for the most part, we still see today.